Hello and welcome to the Motoring Middle East Review. Today I'm checking out the Chevrolet Silverado Trail Boss Regular Cab. And it's actually one of the cars I've been most excited to drive this year because this is the most off-road worthy truck that Chevy has ever made. It's lifted from the factory, it's got mean aggressive wheels and a pretty mean aggressive look. Now, what's interesting about it is that this is exclusive to the GCC. Sorry Americans, you're not getting this one. So this is the only market in the world to get a two-door uh, Trail Boss. So I'm quite excited to drive it. Uh, it's not even that expensive. It's 150,000 dirhams, 700, so 152, 700. So it's about 20 grand cheaper than the four-door version. And it's built for people out here who like an athletic lifestyle, basically young men like me. And I actually own a two-door pickup that happens to be red and happens to be lifted. So you could almost say they designed it for me. Let's see what it's like, shall we? Okay, so that's my quick walkthrough of the Trail Boss. And don't forget, you've already seen this before if you've seen our first drive review. So what's different from the regular Silverado? Well, of course, it's got these red tow hooks down here. Um, they're very red. Um, it's got basically the same bumper at the front. I like the face. A lot of people are hating on the face. I like the Chevy face. And this one has a light up bow tie. So at night, it's a very, very distinctive look for it for sure. Quite a cool looking thing, very muscular and mean in person. This one came up behind you on the highway, you'd get out of the way. So what's different about the Trail Boss? Well, you've got these wheels and you've got these tires. These are Wrangler Duratrax. These are 275, 65, 18, so about 32 inches high. Plenty of room if you want to squeeze in like a 35 in there, I suspect. These are what call hybrid tires, so they're not all terrains and they're not mud terrains, they're something in between. So they've got sort of an all terrainy pattern, which is good for road, quiet and grip and noise and life. And you've got a more aggressive sidewall, which is stronger and in theory gives you more grip in the corners. So what these things do, there's a misconception here. A lot of people think that these things actually are terrible in the sand. What they do is help you turn. When you have a lot of power, these allow you to bite and pull you out of the sand. Just keep you moving. In the old days, when you had mud drains on low-powered cars, <coughs> Toyotas, you couldn't actually get things done. Whereas these tires are great now on these kinds of vehicles. <sighs> Sorry, I had to cut back there. I just had to open the wheel out to show you what's going on. So what's different about Trail Boss? Well, you've got a two-inch suspension lift. So there's no body spacers here. There's actually a taller spring and a longer shock. These are Rancho shocks. They think they're pretty basic looking, but they seem to be quite good. Um, get the job done certainly and you've got a slightly different alignment obviously as well so quite a different setup if you go to the back you've also got a bit more lift at the back as well no different springs but again those red rancho shocks otherwise pretty much your standard silverado oh yeah and you got this trail boss sticker which is quite cool one of the things i didn't realize was how light this tailgate is okay damp tailgate unlike the sierra but it is so light it is like a sheaf of paper light and of course you've got a power outlet in there and I'm an actual power outlet like you could plug your laptop in there how cool so not too many things to give a game away but it has advantages because it's the shortest one you've got excellent break over angles that's the angle underneath it's got very very good clearance underneath the car in front the approach angle doesn't look anything special but I've had no problems with it so far it pretty much goes anywhere so this part of the bumper is actually removable and I would remove it because it gives that a little bit more clearance. You'd lose the fog lights, but really who cares? Um, this part's steel, a very strong steel, obviously, but I would remove this as well and make your own classic steel bumper. Otherwise, the approach angle is pretty good. And at the back, at the back, the departure angle is great as well. And because this bumper is steel, you don't have to worry about it really bending on anything. It's got a little step here as well to help you climb in and out. All right, that's it. Let's look at the interior. There isn't a whole lot to talk about there, but let's look at it anyway. I'm not going to spend too much time going over the interior because you already obviously watched my Silverado first drive. So you know exactly what this interior is about and all the many quirks and features of this vehicle. So I'm just going to go over a couple of the important bits now that I think will uh, that you need to know about and also a few things that I've discovered. So obviously the new Silverado, all new interior, all etc. Um, I'm not crazy about the design of it. I think they could have tried harder. This center stack in particular is a little plain, a little dull. It's almost like it's giving birth to something. It's really weird how it just steps out there. Um, all very clean, very easy to use and all the important stuff is really easy to get to and I like that they're given a PowerPoint. It's well equipped. You've got USBs etc. Climate control. Um, the uke, the Sorry, it's not a U-Connect system, it's a Chevy Myling system. And I don't know if it's the best system I've ever heard. I mean, the screen is fine, I think. 
it could be a little bigger. Seven inches is a bit too small. It was fine like five years ago, but now everybody's going to eight inches and nine inch screens. So you need a bigger screen. Um, sound quality is honestly not great. I think verging on poor. And I'm not quite sure why. I don't know if there's enough speakers or enough amplification, but it's just okay. However, good points. The AC is magnificent. This is such a good AC. Like this is a fridge on wheels. But always GM ACs have been good. You've got a lot of things that are very off-road focused and handy. For example, it's got hill descent, which we will never use. It's all got traction control, which you can turn off. And it's got roll uh, sensing airbags, which you can turn off with this button here. And then another nice things, uh, no more key. So you've got start stop buttons, which is long overdue. You still got the classic GM gear stick, which I like. It's a nice place to rest your hand when you're driving along. Um, seating position is okay. It's taken me like three days to find my ideal seating position. There's no memory seats. But it is electric seat. Electric seats on this side, uh, manual seat on where you're sitting. But it's okay. Um, storage space, uh, you've got space for bins, you've got space for two big bottles here. You've got the Qi charging point that you see in the Sierra as well. Uh, there's a fairly big deep bin here with more two more USBs and a box jack. Um, so reasonable. You've also got two more cup holders here and I think you couldn't, no, you couldn't hold an iPod, iPad in here. Behind the seats I think is wasted space but it's not much space. In the RAM there's like a little a rectangular bin where you can keep stuff and when I say you can keep stuff you can keep baggage in there in fact it's so spacious that it's like a boot now the Silverado doesn't have the same amount of space and it's just to be honest dead space so I feel like next time Chevy maybe make a little bin there where we can keep things because not everybody wants to keep stuff in the bed there are little hooks down here you can hang things but they don't look like I'd want to hang things there they just look like pieces of metal whereas the Ram has these nice plastic fingers that you can hang stuff off of Otherwise, it's a very good car. I mean, its visibility is absolutely excellent. Um, it's easy to get used to, easy to get live with. So that's really about it. I think Chevy could have tried harder with the interior. I think it's a little plain for the amount of money you're spending for it. But then again, what you're paying for is the engineering. And this thing's got some serious beef under the hood. Let's get on the road and find out. So I'm going to do the off-road bit, but I will do a short road bit as well, tell you what it's like on-road, because that's really where the problems lie with this truck. They're not insurmountable problems, but they are problems and I would not be doing my duty if I didn't tell you what they were. So first of all, the stereo is crap. Um, so it kind of makes driving around a lot less fun where you don't have nice tunes to listen to. Problem number two, the back. I'm just talking about the back, the suspension at the back. Unbelievably bouncy. It's just boing, 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 boing the whole time. Like this is a fairly smooth road, but I can feel it. It's relatively okay, but it just never settles down. Whereas the front is a little bit too soft. It's like the two ends don't really know how to shake hands. So the trail boss suspension, which is the whole point of this car, as a road suspension is not great. It's, it's way too stiff. So the advantage of being stiff is on road, it handles very nicely. It goes on corners really well for such a big truck. I mean, this feels like a sporty off-road truck, but it is hard to live with this ride. It's just bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. And it's in your back, in your back, in your back the whole time. Chevy needs to soften up that rear spring. I think a softer spring will still deliver fine off-road. As it stands, I would say the first thing you need to do is go and change the shocks because they'll at least fix the bounciness of the ride. Not perfectly, but yeah. Uh, now what have we got? Well, power. It's got power. I like the delivery of the power. It's, you know, I was very skeptical before. Six-speed automatic, but 355, 355 horsepower, 5.3 liter V8, basically the same one as it was before. Do you know what? It's fine. I mean, on-road, it's absolutely fine. I have nothing to complain about. Fuel economy is actually really good. Um, gearbox is calibrated beautifully. So, good job, Chevy. The drivetrain, nothing to complain about. Nothing at all. It's just this ride is just oh, 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 always never settling down and you will notice it other things people have complained about the wind noise and the tire noise there's a little bit of tire noise mm, it's not that bad my truck is way louder with my km3s which are amazing tires so these tires actually are pretty good it's a little bit louder than normal the wind noise it's not a cadillac it's a silverado i mean the old one was a little bit quieter i feel like this one's a little bit louder but i'm not feeling the hate on the, on the wind noise. Um, other than that, it's really nice. There's good weighting from the steering. I mean, Chevy's done a good job. If you want a truck that drives like a truck, this is your truck. What's it like off-road? That's what you've come to see. 
that's what we do next. Okay, so I'm going to make this pretty brief because it is summer, it is July in the Middle East and it's nearly 40 degrees. I've deflated the 18 inch wheels down to about 15 psi per side, which is about as much as I want to go. If you had 17s, it could go down a little bit more, maybe 12. 12 in the front, 10 in the back is how I normally like it. But with this car, I don't want to pop a bead off the rim. Uh, there are several four wheel drive options. There's a low range option as well. There's automatic, which is fine if you're like on wet weather roads, etc. If you're in the sand, I wouldn't use automatic. There's a two wheel drive, which is of course best for fuel economy and maximum harakat. And then you have four wheel drive. Now, before I can set off, I have to disable the roll sensing airbags. That is a beep telling me that happened. And then hold down traction control, hold down traction control, traction control, traction control. And that turns off ESP as well. Now, I'm not going to put it into like anything fancy. There are no other modes of any sort. So I'm just going to trundle around and see how she do. Oh, oh she's bumpy. She's bumpy. So just drive. Um, it's bumpy, but it's a lot better off-road. Wowzers. It climbs beautifully. <laughs> okay. The back's very bumpy. It just feels like a Land Cruiser, it's incredible. It just kind of digs and goes. The tires are very, very good. I'm not having to use power. I can just use fine throttle movements. It feels unbelievably agile. I mean, the sand is already starting to get pretty soft, but yikes. Um, impressive start. Oh, like that, like that, like that. All right, let's do a drop. Let's do our classic drop, see how it does. Now this is where we'll find out if the ABS was going to come back on again, because this always triggers ABS in cars. Hitting the brakes, hitting the brakes. There's a little bit of ABS intervention, but ABS seems to be staying off. Oh, a little bit of traction control. So even in four height, it stays on. All right. Power. Power. Second gear. Give it the wellies. Oh, it's good. It's like an off-road sports car. Man, it goes really well, yo. <laughs> I mean, this locking diff at the back is doing some pretty amazing things. Ah, here we go. See, here's the problem. Stability control has turned back on again. So now I've got to turn it on again. Hold on. That needs to be fixed, GM. Now it's off, you see? Yeah, that's why electronics packages are not a small matter when you're going off-road, because that ESP might have done something really nasty on the hill. All right, let's see if she'll do a flip, a classic Giardo flip. Oh, oh boy, will she? Will she? Will she? Yeah, maybe it's come back on again. God damn it. I need a kill switch in this car. And for the next time we go off. But it's quite good, eh? It quite does the, just does the job. I'm impressed with the way it's going off-road, actually. Um, the back's very bouncy, but it's not so much of an issue out here. Um, it's very, very poised. Steering is good. That's the right amount of feedback. Engine delivery is great. I actually don't need to leave it in automatic. I, can, I mean, manual. I can just leave it in automatic and it just does it. Um, it's stiff though. I feel like a shock change is what would perfect this car. Yeah. So, what it shares with the Land Cruiser is this uncanny ability to be able to just mount and go top stuff and then you don't worry about how to get down again. So let me see if I can illustrate here um, with this deal. Uh, by the way, that front angle. Whoa, 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 okay, we should have found a fence. Oh, big drop, big drop. Will it be a disaster? Will it be a disaster? Potentially. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not a disaster. Yeah, it's a, it's a good off-road truck. It's almost a good exploration vehicle, overlanding, because it'll just go into these small dunes where the big trucks, like even a Raptor, would struggle. Because in there, it was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But this car is actually just really nicely the right amount of size. 
Um, is it better than my RAM? Mm, yeah, yeah, well, the RAM has slightly better power delivery and I like the way the 8 speed is. Uh, but off road, the 6 speed works really well. Vices. It just needs shocks. It needs shocks. But it's got the juice, 355 horsepower in a package this light means it'll go up and over and around and fly over everything. Will it fly? No. It doesn't have the shock for that. The front feels too soft. But let me see how fast. Whoa, whoa a little jump. Yup. Alright, the Chevy can rock and roll. I'm very impressed actually. I'm not even putting it in manual, I'm just putting it like second gear and it's fine. Oh, it's very high up, it's very high up. We've we've badly miscalculated, but I'm not even afraid because it's such an easy car to drive off-road, so you can just kind of point and shoot. All you need to do is put a uh, decent shock package, decent bumper, etc. So I think I proved my point, also it's very hot, uh, and oh, I can prove my point again improve my point here one more time these tires are good these duo tracks i had my doubts i had my doubts but these duo tracks are good tires i mean this is like proper off-road stuff this is my hard course and there's nothing that this car won't do i took it out yesterday and it was sensational the same hill that i'm doing right now i did in the sh in the chimney and it was could not do it it could not do it, the Jimny. This thing just walks up it. This is why you buy a pickup. This is why you don't buy a Jimny. And actually, let's talk about the Jimny for a second. Don't buy the Jimny. Don't buy the Jimny. Spend your money wisely. Buy something that's actually fun to drive off-road. That's not fun to drive off-road at all. So, this is. Would I buy it? I can kind of see in my mind how it's coming together. I would get a 35-inch tire package, some new wheels, some new shocks, some new bumpers. I'd have about 40 grand <laughs> probably spent by the time I'm done. Um, but out of the box, this is pretty good. I dare say, out of all the single cabs, Ford, um, uh, Ram, etc., this is the best off-road one. On-road, it's not perfect. So it's a mixed bag. But... For the job it says they say it can do which is go off-road i'm pretty impressed i mean it is the best off-road pickup out of the batch is it a raptor killer no is it a ram killer uh it'll certainly give the fight to ram right now which is having it very easy because the rams are pretty awesome but these new silverado trail bosses i think if you know what you're doing if you understand it's a base for modification and that you're going to start fiddling with it i think you'll be very pleased and that's all I have to say on the Trail Boss for 2019. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Thanks a lot. See you next time.